Well, hello. Welcome. What's up? I'm working on working on the ghost hat today. The ghost hat is kind of like the ghost sword, except when you don't have the sword at all, the ghost sword becomes the ghost top hat. And that allows you to aim it with the ghost sword. Um, it also makes it so you can um, take the elements that you've already crafted something like like maybe you crafted the ice sword the fire sword one of these swords it would cross over when you become when you when you get to like swordless dungeons where you don't have your sword at all you still have it you can use the ghost fiery top hat or whatever so i'm i'm going about creating the graphics for the these five different new ghost hat combos so basically just taking these um existing top hats and making them ghost top hats so the art works and then just hook up the programming and then yeah this will be a really nice feature also for swordless runs so if you're not even planning on picking up the sword then this is something that would be pretty cool because I don't know it's kind of neat it's like a different item for a swordless run so it makes swordless runs a little bit unique but also it's, it's more powerful because if you don't pick up the sword you can kind of aim the ghost sword a lot and the ghost sword kind of makes the it more powerful. I mean, the ghost hat kind of makes your hat more powerful, anyways, because you're shooting out a another projectile. All right, so let's make these graphics. I'm not sure exactly what the right opacity is going to be for this. So I'll have to try out throwing on these other top hats and changing their opacities and then exporting it, trying it in the game to see kind of how it looks. <clears throat>
Yeah, I think I'm gonna like it actually better if I do something like this. Or just delete the, instead of making it all blurry like that, just focus on what's important about each piece of this art. Something like that, and then make each bit a little bit, a little bit more ghostly. All right, so got those drawn now to make some slices. All right, so to name these,
All right, let's get this rendered. Okay, so it works if you're in any area. Oh, this is, uh, oh. Okay, so yeah, this will work because we'll be in a swordless dungeon. Z3 is a swordless dungeon here. Or I could just turn off the sword entirely and it would work anytime. So let's do that. Let's go to zero. We got that built. Okay, so um, last little bit to get this working and see it in the game is to hook it up. And that happens. Get item sprite frame name. Yeah, if it's the go sword. So actually, oh. So really, we need a, um, a vector of item types that are items that These are just go swords, basically. Anything that matches this or Sweet. Now you can just say contains then I replace the image and see if that works. So we should have the ghost hat. Yeah, all right, so we can throw the ghost hat. And in the inventory, there's the ghost hat, but where's the, oh, maybe I don't have anything crafted. We need to hack something up, like a fire sword. Wait, wait, we have an ice hat. Ice hat, no, ice. <laughs> Fire sword plus ice top hat. Two elements in one. There you go. So you can freeze enemies and light bushes on fire. All right, check it. Fire sword upgrade. Okay, now I need some custom descriptions as well, which means we're probably going to need to export this K ghost swords. Right, where is that? Where? Oh no! Wait, this that's that's in parse text keys, which is right here. 
So it's the same damn thing. Just if contains okay, go swords item. Switch to that, and that means that um, here. Okay, so we got item go sword two. Um, item fire sword ice sword lightning poison fear all these are two and it's just changing it to say ghost hat Oops. All right, let's see if that works. Gosh, that would this this went faster than I thought it would. It's just a, kind of the cherry on top for this new feature. It's a way to just you know if you're if you've been gosh you've been playing a run for three hours or whatever you crafted the ice sword and you end up in a swordless dungeon without your sword, you can still use it. It still use its element. It'd be super duper handy. And on a swordless run like this, you need everything you can. So you might as well be able to use what you craft on your ghost sword. Let's check that out this time. I should say something like ghost. Fire hat upgrade. Ghost hat leaves a trail of fire. Sweet. Let's actually craft that to make sure that actually happens when it's crafted so we will have no fire sword ghost sword is able to be crafted we need to have fire we need to be here what's up smith all right, so we'll craft fire hat, fire ghost hat. I love it. I love how it does it there too. Oops. Okay, so I'm throwing down the ghost hat. It looks like a ghost hat. That's cool. So far, so good. Now it should combine into the fire hat. And fire ghost hat. Fire, I guess it should say fire ghost hat in the description. Because the other one is already the fire hat. Yes, alright, cool. Use the right graphic. That's the right graphic. Cool. Um, yeah, I just needed to change that description. Hope that's not too long. Oh yeah, that works. It's fine. Cool. Now, I guess we could
can save. And try it the other way. Oh, oh, I wanted to do that. Super weird. Oh, whoops. It's not the right saves file. Aha. All right, so if we're in either one of the swordless dungeons and we do have the sword, it should still work. ghost hats so yeah there's the icy top hat upgrade here's the lightning ghost hat upgrade <clears throat> and if we run all the way out of this dungeon <laughs> that was weird I know that's a bug I got that on my list okay so now that we're back out, we have the sword back and it changes back to the ghost sword or the lightning sword upgrade. So this is something you would notice as a player only if you've played long enough to have crafted a sword and then gone back into another swordless dungeon, which is probably the second swordless dungeon, where that's probably gonna happen on most runs. Um, so, but then it's pretty, it's just a pretty handy way to um, keep the game out exactly how it is. You know, the Ghost Sword works as it always has. It works in a unique way versus the top hat, which makes it really, you know, really interesting for battle because you can throw your top hat in one direction. And you can kind of master using both of them in a little bit different ways. Um, but then again, if you don't even have the sword, it makes the play a lot more interesting, so let's save here. Take away the sword entirely. And this, if this run were this way, where you didn't even pick up the sword, you would always have the ghost hat. So you still can get that crafted power if you want it. If you want the extra challenge, you don't have to craft this. <clears throat> you don't have to craft it. The sword and the sword at all. Let's do one more thing. Um, what if you don't even have the ghost sword yet? I know I checked this yesterday, but I want to check it once more today. And let's go to. Right, so since I don't even have the sword, this is the only way this would happen, is if you didn't have the sword, 
This is if you did have the sword, this would be the ghost sword. But if you don't have the sword, this is the ghost hat. So it's the ghost hat on the ground, it's the ghost hat here in this item, and it's the ghost hat in the description right there. And we just check crafting. Let's go ahead and save this, and then we're out here on the menu. Let's see, how would you actually equip? Oh, if you, ah. Uh, how would you ever show on the main menu? Like what would be the situation on the main menu where you would actually show the ghost sword? That would only happen if you were crafting it. So I guess let's go back to the crafting room. Try that. We'll equip the ghost sword or hat. Go to the main menu. Well, let's turn on skip to menu. Okay, let's get it saved with the ghost sword equipped in the one place that you can. Ghost sword slash hat. Put that right on A. Alright, it's showing nothing equipped. I, just, I don't know if this is really worth it trying to freaking get this one. That's such a freaking tiny situation in the game where you'd be. where you could ever actually equip the ghost sword. It's for only a tiniest moment, and it's like a, it's not worth it going and fixing the main menu so it shows it for such a 0.1% of the time type of thing. So, yeah, since you can't really equip the ghost sword. In general, I'm not going to worry about showing it here on the menu. Okay, so this is ready to check in. Yeah, work done. Work done on that topic. Made these custom ghost, ghost hat icons. All right, we're done with that. Let's get this checked in. We added five new graphics. Sort of two, 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 two. Go sad, go sad, go sad. All right. Okay, well, I had a few more things on my list I would like to get done today. Let's take a look at what's a top priority. Oh, well, right, right. Engine 314. This was a little issue I ran into last night on my last night's playthrough. that skip menu we want something 
Let's do fire sword. Ice top hat. Okay, so the top hat has the ice. And so I added on, I added these bits of water that go around the acid pillars. It's a tiny algorithm that checks if it's in the type of room that it should be doing this. It allows you to basically get past these, these pillars. Well, let's make them so they you can't see. I mean, where are we at here? It's three, one, four, of course. All right, so two, one, four. Let's get rid of that position on the map so it doesn't automatically remove the acid pillars. These horn things. Yeah, so right, there's two ways to get past, or three ways to get past this. One, you use your, your acid weapon or whatever. Um, two, you can freeze this water. Or three, you can use the blink orb level two. But this is a hidden area, right? This is supposed to be a hidden area. This is supposed to be something, you know, this is not on the critical path of the game. If you can't get in this room, it doesn't matter. So this is the kind of thing where it's actually removing challenge from the game to put this here because last night I crafted <coughs> ice pretty early and it makes you be able to sneak into some of these places a little bit too soon. Um, and you know, your run becomes easier that way. Uh, so basically I want to, I want to use this technique for important places like the acid dungeon. Um, because that dungeon is something where you have to get you have to get past the acid pillars to get lower into the dungeon So that in particular is the area where it needs to happen, but something like this Where it's an optional side thing where it's actually you're actually going to a secret entrance anyways to another dungeon So it's like it should be super secret as secret as possible. Okay, where? There it is. Okay, so Stock Hour 5 is the acid dungeon. All the acid dungeons. 5. Stock Hour 5. Yeah. So is the other two floors of it. They're all Stock, stock Hour 5. So basically, if you're in the acid dungeon, That's where this needs to happen. This is where it's critical that there are more ways to get past the acid pillars. Everything else is optional things that are basically back. They're meant to be backtracked, right? You're meant to you're meant to go to a different dungeon, find another item. You're like, whoa, I got this other item in this other dungeon that I could use in back in that dungeon. So it's one of those little things where you see it one time, you're like, whoa, how am I ever going to get past that? So if you already can get past it, it kind of ruins that whole surprise-y element. So that's why doing it only here in this critical thing. So let's make sure that this does work, indeed. We need to go to the Acid Dungeon in this world, which is, this one's five. Engine. Okay, so we're gonna go to the entrance to this dungeon and find the goal room make sure on the way oh why do i have to find it i don't have to just look on the map oh yeah 
that's right there. Where is it? Four one five, four four five. Wait, what? Let's go four one five. It's right here. What? Right, here it is. Okay. So, if this code were not in place, there would be no water around this. So, you can get by these. freezing the water. Oh, that was an acid bomb, so it got past it anyways. part of some test last night. I can't have the blink over this. Definitely get around that way. But I think I should just no, you can't blink past that. But yeah, so freeze that bottom water too. And get around that. Okay, let's see it on a couple more worlds. 
Let's um oh before we leave this world, let's just make sure that this one situation here that we were first talking about does not have the water any longer. Because it gives away the, the secret too easily. Good. Okay, so that's back to how it was. Great. Now let's go back to World Wizard. <clears throat> I think Wizard is Dungeon 6. And it's up in the top left, which is like one, five, six, maybe. Nope. Four. Oh, there it is. Okay, so yeah, this is a custom pattern, which used to be a narrow space where you would go through, but if it's the acid one, it's these pillars, these horn things, and it surrounds it with a little bit of water so you can get past it that way. So it's an extra way. For example, it's, it's really meant for the case where you've accidentally crashed the ship already you never crafted acid, and suddenly you finally go back and you play this dungeon. It seems to happen in a lot of people's runs, probably because this dungeon is one of the later ones, usually, in each world. And so thus, you get here, you can't go craft the acid anymore, and now you have a way to get past it, because ice usually comes before that, in most cases. So, at least there's one more way to get past these. Let's check a couple more worlds. Like... Uh, Darfnum. Darfni. No way! Dude, this is the luckiest thing ever! Darfni just so happened to be exactly the same dungeon number! And location of the goal. It's so crazy weird. And so is this thing. It's so weird. Holy crap. Okay, let's try a different one. Um lar large large Same thing, this is Dungeon 6 as well. Alright, but I gotta cheat to find it where... 2, 3, 6. Okay, here's a, this is a good example of one. Um, happens to be in a furlock room as well. Um, so we want to be at 2, 2 and take 2, 3, 6 off the map. And um, let's see it without the code. It's already had some water. Okay. But it's not water that stretches up here, so you can't get past it. Let's see, with the code. Right, so now we got a good thick bit of water you can use to get around that. In the case that you lap without acid, and you actually could have got the acid here, but you can't run here. Nice. Or the blame three, or which is possible in any run, because you could buy it at the store. As long as you got the other one, well, yeah, you have to. If you, if you
you crash the ship, you have to be. Okay, so let's um let's check that in. It looks well. Let's do one more world. I want to see some other kind of situation, like jelly. Thank God, a dungeon six that's not acid. Which one is acid though? Psychedelic, acid seven here. Oh three seven. This is why making a procedural game takes so much more time. Because you gotta make sure every little mechanic works in like at least ten different ways. Oh, this is another one of those kinds. I just want to do one more world just to see like I want to see something different. I want to see a, another kind of pattern happen right there. I guess the game does prefer to use that at that pattern if it can. Ah, whatever. Jeez. All right, that's enough. Let's do this tiny little thing before these other things. These are a little bit longer tasks. So I got maybe one more thing I could do here in the stream. And this one should be quick. Just moving the permadeath timer to the top of the screen when you're going to the menu. Okay, so it doesn't look that bad here on, on this ratio, but on a TV or something that's closer to 16 by 9, those numbers will be creeping into the other text there and it looks hella bad. You know what I'm saying? So let's, uh, I'm gonna move it depending on, I think it's in game scene. Um, why was that function? Just there.
Hmm, maybe he's here. So I'm trying this. If it's flux gear, then do that, and then in phase gear. Ooh, what happened? When you begin, but when you right when you take the interface. So if you're not sliding and And just call set life containers. Oh, whoops. It's gear dot count life containers. And
There we go. I mean, I guess you could do it after the fade. And we got your slide timer or slide time, slide timer, slide duration. Oh, I guess really what it is is the uh, how fast it's fading. What is it? Let's just take a guess. I think it's about 1.618 seconds. And we don't need to do this extra stuff in a tick anyways. This is a bad place for this. Should be animating in a tick. Cool, so we move the permadeath timer two places. Hopefully that's better timing. And so it's after the, the HUD fades out the, the health. Hmm. Why doesn't that work?
Jeez, man. There's a lot of stuff here to read. Oh, hey, it's finally got a dark top. That's cool. Oh, well, it's like kept my old session. No way. Does that work? No way, that'd be sweet. Oh. Got a script for it. All right, where was I? All right, does this work? Oh, we didn't even compile it. Shazzle. Right, right. I think it's schedule and then a name for the function. Oh, that might be that. Oh, it's scheduled once, that's what I'm looking for. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. Schedule once. What? Oh, it takes a float. Okay, a little less delay, but that'll work.
Okay, that was a little too fast, I guess. Nice, that worked. That's about right. Okay. Alright, so that's it for this stream. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah, all this stuff's coming in version 1.02 for Songbringer. And that'll be out in the next couple days. Probably, probably tomorrow or the next day. Thanks for watching. Signing off.